radio team, something I want to start off with is a couple of considerations that you need to um, have in mind when you are packing your pack. Now, what you want to do is, I'll let you envisage this from the outside so you can visualize it, all right? I'll provide a couple of diagrams so you can see exactly what I'm talking about. But imagine your back is up against there, okay? The closest part along here, of the inside of the pack, that's where you want your heaviest items to be. Closest to the spine, so that you're not exaggerating the amount of weight by placing it to the outside, so that the load is increased by dragging you away back to the ground. So the closer that heaviest weight is to your back, to your back, it'll pull you straight down rather than pulling you away, which will give you excess um, strain on the shoulders, which you don't need, it's unnecessary. So placing your heaviest weights in the back there, closest to your spine. Don't place them in the top, don't place them in the bottom, don't place them on the sides, especially don't place them on the side pouches. Place your heaviest items in the rear, uh, sorry, in the interior closest to your spine. So what do I mean by heavy items? I'm talking about your excess water, your excess rats if you haven't broken them down and they're that heavy, um, the old radios, the big square brick ones, if they're, um, if they're being used, they're perfect to go in there because they'll help keep the, everything else in your pack nice and um, straight. Um, excess batteries, if you have a, a ton load, put them in there. Um, things like that, all right? So not things like your sleeping bag and that, that doesn't need to necessarily go there. It'll still go in your interior compartment, just not as close to your spine. Now, what I'm about to show you is more specific to what my job role is. Um, it's not necessarily what you should do. It's um, a starting block to get your uh, own thinking process happening so that you can develop your own way of packing your pack. But there's a couple of considerations that you do need to consider uh, when packing your pack and they should be um, standard across the board, all right? It's not gonna matter what role you're um, doing, what, um, what company you're in, what uh, core you're in. It's, this should be the same sort of principles all around. So that's be, that being the first one, heaviest items closest to your back. Now at the top and sort of on the exterior of your pack, so these exterior pouches all along here, you want that to be your items that you're gonna be using the most or your mission essential items. If you have mission essential items, I, I place mine up in the top. So things like my, um, my map, protractor, uh, excess notebook, uh, panel marker, those kind of things, those go on the top of my um, pack lid so they're easily uh, easily accessible for whenever I need them. Now, they aren't that heavy, so they can go up the top there. You do see a lot of people putting their camelbacks underneath um, up the top there. It's not that bad of an idea if you're carrying maybe a two liter or a three liter, but any more than that, I don't even know if they, I, knew, I know they do come in bladders up to 10 liters. Don't be placing those ones up the top there. That's a, it's a terrible idea because if that water's up at the top there and you start walking along and that water starts going you know, side to side, your whole body's gonna start feeling excess weight from that water shifting, 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 shifting. So keep that in mind. I'll explain my water goes in a minute, but no camelbacks at the top unless they're very small ones and used for just short moves. Now, on the exterior, like I said, mission essential equipment. So what is that? To me, um, sorry, not mission essential, yeah, mission essential equipment and uh, items that you use on a regular basis. So what exactly are they? I would class items you use regularly, such as your toiletries, um, your med kit, water, uh, food for the day, those things you're gonna be using a lot, yeah? So I, as you can see, this pouch is empty. That's where I keep my food, because obviously I don't have food now. I don't take my ration packs home like some people do, but um, <laughs> Rations go on there for me. Um, my day's rations are going there. Now, when I get my ration pack, I like to open it up and I um, pack everything in a small bag that I know I'm gonna eat. If I'm not gonna eat something, I'm not gonna carry it. I'll offer it to one of my mates. Um, if the section doesn't want it, I'll discard it. I'll throw it out. I don't need to carry excess things that I'm not gonna eat. Like for me, I don't usually eat the tinned pears. Now the tinned pears are, I can't remember how heavy they are, like 250 grams or whatever, 250, 500 grams, I can't remember how heavy they are, but that's an extra 250, 500 grams that you don't need to carry. So if you know you're not gonna eat it, there's no point in carrying. And that goes for all your other ration packs as well. Say if you get three to five days, in one case I got nine days worth of rats, break them down and throw the stuff out or give it away, the stuff that you know you're not gonna need. You don't need to carry it, all right? So in here will be my, um, the daily snacks such as the, uh, the muesli bars and the, um, 
the noodles and all that kind of stuff, the excess sort of snacking things. In these ones is where I keep my main meals. So I can easily just pop that open and slide the main meal out, tear the corner off and just squeeze it down my gob, easy. Outside on the, on the rear here is where I keep my water because you're always gonna need water from your pack. I always keep two liters, only two liters on the ex, uh, exterior of my pack because like I said before, you don't want that excess weight dragging you down away from your body, uh, creating excess load. Now, it is kind of, kind of um, hypocritical to carry you know, a heavier thing towards the outside. That's why I try to minimize it by only carrying two liters. Some people will carry two liters there and two liters there. That's four kilos that you have that's dragging you back. That's just gonna make you feel even like you're carrying a heavier pack when you don't need to. In my experience, I. You know, you carry ridiculous amounts of weights anyway, so why try to make it any harder when you know you don't need to? So, yeah, water, um, food on the outside, so stuff that I'm gonna use a lot. Down the bottom here is where I keep my hoochie because if I'm using it, um, you know, for daily or night routine and that, it'll be down in the bottom, nice and accessible, easy to pack away. Nothing else is in there, so I can quit, if I don't have time to fold it up, like in the method that I have previously shown you, I can just jam it in there and zip it up and get out of there if we need to bug out. Like I was saying before, um, keep my med kit on one side that I always know it's gonna be on and toiletries on the other. Once again, I've broken them down into only uh, things that I necessarily need to carry. You don't need to carry a huge friggin' St. John's ambulance um, med kit that's gonna you know, save a small town in Africa. Just the little things that you know you're gonna need like some uh, uh, pain relief like Panadol, um, you know, a couple of bandages, some uh, iodine wipes, tweezers, tweezers are great. No one usually ever brings them, but I guarantee you they'll most likely get used every X. Um, and then, yeah, so on the last pouch on that side, it's pretty much just my admin pouch. That's where I keep my excess toiletries, like um, my baby wipes and spare socks that are waterproof. Because uh, you'll find that you do use spare socks, uh, you do, you will use your spare socks quite often, especially in longer exercises. Uh, there's no point having them in the bottom of your pack, for example. It's nice to keep them on the outside so they're easily accessible. Right. Now to the inside. So up in the top here is where I keep my gonk mat. So. Uh, I know I don't usually use it. You can carry it at the top there if you want. I usually do keep it there um, anyway, but I think I started carrying it there as a precaution for transport because I used to carry it um, just in behind here. Sort of like that, and then up, up in the top of there of the frame. I don't know if you can really see that, but yeah, up into there. Um, that's where I used to carry it, but I used to get paranoid that you know when you start going out uh, putting your stuff on the trucks and the buses and that, it'll just fall out and you lose your gonk mat and you don't want to start a bush X with no gonk mat. So I started putting up the top there and I'm pretty sure I just sort of left it there as it went along. So on the interior of the pack, for me, I carry a, um, what we call a grab bag. So in this grab bag, it's right at the top, easily accessible and you pretty much can just pull it out straight away and go. So it's, it's just a small backpack essentially. Um, you know, there's not much in it. What you would carry in there is, uh, you know, uh, maybe a liter of water, one main meal, uh, a couple of spare batteries, and um, anything you didn't want the enemy to get their hands on, like your secret codes, uh, your radios, etc. Put that, I put all that kind of stuff in there so that say if um, the, our position was getting overrun and we had to bug out and I couldn't take this bad boy, all I have to do is open up the pack, grab that, I know it's got everything I need to survive for the next 24 hours and not let the enemy uh, get the stuff that they're probably after. So you might lose your sleeping bag, but you know what? The enemy is not gonna really do anything with the sleeping bag. They're probably after your secret codes and that kind of stuff. So in the top here is where I keep my, um, yeah, don't, that's empty, but with your camel back, when it is full and if I'm not carrying the big radio, uh, that goes in there. So like I said before, you want those heavy items closest to your back. So that excess water goes in this bigger, um, big pouch that is close to my back. And I'll explain something else in a second as well when I, once I get to it, what, as I was saying before about the bladders. So this is, um, pretty sure these are three liter bladders. Uh, these are the issued ones that you get. Uh, quite good, made by Camelback, good to go. Inside here is my bivy bag and sleeping bag. I don't use the issued one, I use the issued bivy bag because it's uh, cheap and it's free. Um, 
but I don't use the Ishid sleeping bag because it's too heavy. It is extremely warm, but it's too heavy for what it needs to be. I've got one that's um, you know, just in the middle of what I need to operate with. So on the interior, um, you know, I've got a couple of things that I've just thrown in here that you probably normally carry. Cups canteen, I like to keep that on the inside because I don't really use it that much. You can carry this on your webbing, uh, but you think you'll find within the coming years, you know, those uh, H harness style of webbing will start to generally fade out. You won't be able to carry these in your with your kidney water bottles. Um, on the interior here, I've got what I was saying before about um, the bladders. This is a uh, five liter or six liter, I think it is. I can't remember exactly. Um, this is just my spare water, okay? So I'm going out for an extended amount of time. I know I'm, getting, I know I'm not getting resupplied. I'll use this uh, to carry that excess water. Now, once again, that doesn't go in the bottom of your pack because that is six kilos of weight once filled. If I'm not carrying the big radio, it'll go in there. Like I said before, you want that weight close to your back. Now, this pouch, I don't know if you can really see, but um, it doesn't go all the way to the bottom, okay? So that's what helps keep this weight uh, close to your back and away from sagging down to the bottom and dragging everything else away. And um, last but not least, the, the faithful ET. Uh, I don't really use this to sort of carry it. Um, I sort of just whacked it in there so you guys can see. Uh, normally you would carry this on the exterior of your pack if you were going to be using it quite frequently with your ET cover. Uh, you would attach that somewhere to the outside, but unfortunately with these tactile packs, I haven't got any um, molly uh, that you can attach the, the cover to. Uh, you can get them customized to that option, but I don't really carry an ET anyway. So uh, yeah, something to consider as well. Alrighty guys, now we're gonna fit all this stuff into your pack. Now you don't necessarily have to follow the same order that I'm going through, but the general um, way that we're gonna go about it is gonna be the same with the principles. It's gonna be in line with the principles that I just previously explained. Uh, with keeping the weight to the um, interior closest to the spine. So we're going to fast track this a little bit. Um, one thing before I do start off, it is optional to roll your sleeping bag and movie bag up. Uh, I like to do it because it conserves a bit of space. If you have the time and it's not in a tactical environment where it's going to cause a lot of noise, by all means, fold it over, roll it up, jam it in your pack so it fits in there nice and neatly. If you don't have that luxury, say if you need to get out of there real fast, uh, just pack it up grab it and smash it into your pack. Good to go, let's start. Right guys, if you like this video, if you learned something new, comment down below. Um, if you have your own way of packing your pack, let me know. Um, if you want any more, if you want any more info on anything else that I have, maybe some of the equipment that I carry or anything like that, uh, drop a comment down below and I'll get back to you guys when I can. Cheers, guys.